Hello. Airs on. Sorry. Um, this was requested a while ago. And it just... As things do, they just tend to keep getting pushed back and pushed back. And I decided to stop pushing not on purpose just some things just get put on the list and then you just never get to them but this is that uh, the Austin School Crusades Part 1 this that Dr. Roy has his and so we're gonna go ahead and do that we're gonna break it down he I saw there was a part two yep so we're gonna break this down it's going to be seven videos, seven 15 minute ish videos. So let's go ahead and get into the Crusades part one and listen to Dr. Ray. I, I have some stuff I want to do before I jump in, and I also want to talk about what I'm going to do when I jump in so that it's not a complete surprise. Uh, so one of the things I want to do, I have a lot of trouble with, which is it's self-promotion. So <laughs> I'm going to pass these around. These are just bookmarks. It's advertising my novel, and I brought a copy of my novel. So I have a novel, and it's The Blood Throne of Caria. And the reason I'm pushing it, and it makes me feel dirty doing this, so I'm, I'm probably you know, just off a little bit, is because I'm uh, ramping up to try and put out another novel, and if I can get a little bump in sales before that happens, it helps me. So if, if you like that kind of stuff, get my novel. Uh, that kind of stuff is historical fiction. Um, I'm particularly obsessed with basically uh, everything from Iran to Italy. That's like my zone where I, I uh, obsess about. This is set in the 6th century, 5th century, 5th century BC. Um, in the southwest corner of Turkey. Um, and it's about a real person, so it's historical fiction, but she doesn't have, her name is Artemisia, she doesn't have a lot of, um, how should we say this, there's, there's a lot of attacks done on her by historians, and so my goal when writing this novel was to figure out what was true and what was a lie, and then correct the lie. But I can't claim it's the truth because it's speculation on my part, so hence historical fiction. Um, somebody is going to ask at some point what they should read. This is a fun way to start. It's The Crusades Through Arab Eyes. Wouldn't that be a novel idea by Amin Malouf? It, it's, it's an old book. It's 1985, if I remember correctly. But uh, there. Now, <clears throat> I've done that part. I also want to dedicate this talk uh, to, a, to a group of people. Uh, so it's a small list, but I, I just want to do this. Um, Omar, Saeed, uh, Iman, 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 <laughs> and then Hadi. <laughs> uh, nice. I'm probably forgetting somebody else I intended. You know what? I'm going to throw Jaden into the mix. He'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe you threw my name in there. I'll take um, one. I actually have a, I was just gifted a piece of rock from Palestine, uh, from uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And so I'm probably gonna hold on to it the entire talk because, well, my talk is gonna take place in Palestine mostly, so this is kind of a, a strange thing to have right now. Also, uh, let's see, what did I do with it? I probably already lost it. I brought show and share, but it, show and tell, but it won't work because the camera is too small and you're sitting too far away. I actually brought coins from the time period. So I will, wow. uh, after the talk, you can come up and look at it. And then what I'll do is we'll put the, for the uh, people who are watching this on video, I'll just put pictures up on it. But just to give you a, an idea of what I have, this is a coin from William II. It's after the period I'm talking about today because I'm not gonna get to him. Uh, he, William II was the king of Sicily the year in my head is 1153, but who knows? Anyway, the reason I brought it was because I am going to talk about the Normans and I'm going to talk about Sicily a little bit for background purposes. And I kind of wanted to stick this in your head a little bit. On one side, the coin is written on Latin, in Latin. 
On the other side, it's written in Arabic because the Normans took Sicily from the Arabs and so they just made it so that they were a bilingual society. Um, this, let me see, hold on, I'll do this one here. This coin is going to matter because this is Romanos IV, the Roman emperor. Um, I'm gonna talk about him in a little bit of detail, just briefly because he's gonna set things in motion that make the rest of the story possible. And then when you look at the coin, you'll see that the quality of the coin dramatically falls when you get to Alexios Komnenos. Uh, Alexios Komnenos becomes the Roman emperor just uh, like 11 years later. And the quality of the coin is terrible compared to this one. So it makes you realize how far into decline the Romans had fallen. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of background uh, and, and in the process of doing the background talk, I'm gonna bring up the birth of the Arab Empire. I, we don't know what year this coin was minted because it doesn't have a year on it. It's actually a counterfeit coin. Um, the Arabs, when they made their empire, needed coins. And they went and stole a Roman mint and they began minting coins, Roman coins. So it has Latin letters on the back it has three Roman emperor, well, an emperor and his two sons on the front. They're holding in one hand a cross, and in the other hand a globus cruciger with the cross sticking out of it. So there's literally six crosses on this coin. And this is the Arab Empire, one of the Arab Empire's first ever coins. It was minted during the Rashidin period. Uh, we don't know a date, so I can't tell you who, but most likely it would have been Uthman ibn Affan or the Khalifa Ali ibn Abi Talib. It's probably not one of the earlier two. And then this coin is Muawiyah the first. He did the same thing. It's a Roman emperor with uh, two crosses in his hand and on the back Latin letters. And I, the, one of the reasons why I wanted to sink that into your heads is to also show how the boundary between things is really blurry. Right, we, we're a society of people who want to put everything into categories, including ourselves. Yes. We can't wait to label ourselves, and then we, we keep breaking it down further and further, and the reality is, is these categories are all imaginary and made up. <laughs> Nobody's that easy to categorize, you know what I mean? Let alone whole societies, especially societies where everything is blurred together. Um, I probably have said Arabic words, for example, that are English in this. I don't. I wasn't paying attention, but you know, at one point I might say the word nadir or zenith or zero. <laughs> and then, by by contrast, Arabic is filled with Latin words. For example, the word fulus, the word for money, comes from folus. It literally was one of those coins was a folus that I was holding up. And so the the word is actually Latin. It's not Arabic. It's just the Arabs use the Latin word. Crez, the word for cherries comes from kerasinus, which is the Latin word for cherry. And it can go on and on, because everything's stuck together. All right, so, uh, as Eric Deggins would say, I'm gonna do a bunch of table setting. Uh, Eric Deggins is a TV critic that I listen to on NPR, and he recently complained about too much table setting, but I don't know how to not do table setting. And the reason I have to do the table setting is if I just jump into the Crusades and start talking about it, It'll be entertaining because it's there's a lot of a lot of violence. It's like if you enjoy people massacred, and I know you do because I watch the same movies you do, <laughs> then this is this is a great story because it is gory. Um, but it's kind of helpful to know why it happened, and how did we even get into the situation where it was possible. So I don't I can't skip that. Um, having said that, I have no intention and no belief that I can, even if I wanted to, cover the entire Crusades. So in other words, this is part one. So just setting this up now. I will try to do the entire Crusades, but I'm betting I'm going to have to do four parts. Um, one of the reasons I don't know is some of you have, have figured this out about me. I don't write my lectures out, so I actually don't know what I'm going to say until it starts happening. And so as a result, <laughs> I don't know how the timing of this is going to land, but so it'll be fun. It's, I'm exploring this with you and I'll see where it goes. It'll probably be a train wreck and people will hate it, but it'll be fun for me anyway. And that's the important thing. Um, all right. So 
To do this, I need to introduce some actors. The first actor I want to introduce it's, is probably the most important actor in the story, and it's the Arabs. Brad Pitt, oh. And the reason they're the most important, obviously, is because the Crusaders are going to invade the Arab world to fulfill their goal of, of making a kingdom of Jerusalem. So the Arabs created an empire that most people don't refer to, don't talk about, that's basically been deleted from history. It's the Arab Empire, although I have frequently heard it referred to as the Muslim Empire. The reason you need to not do that and call it the Arab Empire is the Arab Empire was created by Arabs, like the Roman Empire was created by Romans. We don't call it the Pagan Empire, and when it becomes Christian, we don't call it the Christian Empire, right? And the Japanese, we don't call them the Shinto Buddhist Empire. You know what I mean? We, the, when Alexander the Great made his empire, we don't call it the Pagan Empire. So why would we do this in this one particular case? And what I'm going to pose to you is the reason we usually don't even name it, and if we do, we sometimes call it the Muslim Empire, is because of anti-Arab hate. We have that running through the yeah. Yeah. core of our society, the core of our civilization. And one of the reasons is because of the events that led to the Crusades and the Crusades themselves. In other words, by, by doing anti-Arab hate, you're perpetuating this old wound. It's time to let it go. Although, by the time we're done tonight, you'll be like, oh my God, <laughs> what's that about? So it'll be good. Uh, the Arabs began making their empire, and by empire, I mean it in the true sense of the word empire. So to be clear, a state that rules multiple countries and nations. That's, that's all you need to be to be an empire. Having said that, you could claim then that the United Kingdom today, what's left of the great empire is still an empire because Great Britain is Wales, England, and Scotland. That's three countries. And then throw in Northern Ireland, Gibraltar, Bermuda, and the Falkland Islands, the Malvinas, and you end up with multiple countries, right? Or at least pieces of multiple countries. So they began making their empire in 633 when the first Khalifa, Abu Bakr, launches his armies into the Persian and Roman empires simultaneously in what should have been a completely insane, impossible, can't be done event. And it's, and it's not only done, but by 711, the Arab empire became the largest empire on the planet to that date. There have been larger empires since, but there had never been a larger empire before this. It stretched by 711 from Spain to Pakistan. It went all the way into Central Asia. So if you can conjure a map of the Roman Empire, it owned about 60% of the Roman Empire. <clears throat> conjure a map of the Persian Empire, it owned 100% of the Persian Empire. And it went into Central Asia and it went into India. Right? For those of you, because I just said Pakistan, for those of you who don't know, the British cruelly and sadistically cut pa it, Pakistan out of India. Pakistan is India. It's just, you know how the Brits are. It's divide and conquer, wreck, destroy, ruin. India is named after the Indus River, which is 100% in Pakistan. It's just cruel. What? You know what I mean? What? Anyway, so, um, this Arab empire, by the way, when it was born, it had a tiny Muslim population. But by 711, it had a few more Muslims. It was maybe 5, 10% of the population was Muslim. The empire itself was majority Christian, 60% Christian. In fact, probably somewhere around 60% of the world's entire Christian population was in the Arab empire. And that hard to comprehend. The majority of the world's Christians lived in the Arab empire, an empire that was majority Christian in 711. So the empire has been around that, right? From 633 to 711, it's already been around for a few decades. It's not like it was just born. One of the reasons why Muslims are such a small percentage of the population is they didn't convert by the sword. There, there was no compulsion to become Muslim. And it, oh, and at, like there was no, you, you did it willingly. There, it wasn't forced on you. First, what the Muslim conquerors did was they said, if you're a Christian or Jewish, you're, you, you worship the book, therefore you have a pathway to heaven, so you have 
you have to be treated like a full human. But then as they kept conquering, they kept running into other religions, and they just kept extending it. So the Zoroastrians, okay, yeah, why not? And right, centuries later, by the time they're in India proper, they're like, yeah, Hindus too, it's all good. We're gonna make this work. Right, that was, that was what kept happening. So in a way they were, in their conquest, they weren't, how, how do I, they weren't condemning people for their religious beliefs. They were pretty much saying, all right, you believe in something, fine, carry on. By the way, the Arab Empire in 711 was probably about 5-10% Buddhist, just to mess with you. Uh, Afghanistan had a giant Buddhist population. So, it, like, it seems counterintuitive, but there it is. That oh. empire gets into a conversation with itself. And the conversation it has with itself stems from a problem that they had. The Arabs had never ruled themselves, let alone ruled an empire right until this moment 633 the year they launched the empire is the year the arabs for the first time in history rule the entire arabian peninsula so they don't even catch their breath they conquer the arabian peninsula put it under a single state and then they just go they just keep going they're, next thing you know they're they've conquered the persian empire and they've conquered the majority of the roman empire and they're they're in france trying to conquer france we're going to stop it right there. We'll go back to the 15 minute mark though, just to kind of clean it up a bit. We'll go to there. All right. So this is part one. This is going to be a seven parter. And um, there's a thanks button on the channel. Should be. If it's there, you can donate to the channel. If not, I don't know uh, what the deal is. Um, but you can donate to the channel. If you do, much appreciated, it's great. If not, I get it, it's, you know, it's tough times around the world, so no harm, no foul. Um, like and subscribe is free, so you could uh, at least give a thumbs up to the video. Uh, it's a $400 fine if you do the thumbs down, which I will charge you and I will be expecting payment immediately. Um, subscribing is free. And I forgot what I was going to say, but until next time, oh, I was going to tell you my back hurts. That's what it was. What do you care for? Uh, until next time, have a good day. Have a good night.